Okay, folks, over my shoulder, you can see I am surrounded by cylinder heads. Now, some of you that have been watching my last couple videos might recognize these guys right here, because these are the GT43 bar heads that I bought as part of a package. So a buddy of mine locally was fortunate enough to find this stuff laying around in a junkyard. I got the upper and lower intake down here getting ready to get stripped and cleaned and ported and polished and ready to go on this 1991 GT convertible that I'm actually building for my mom. It's part of a nostalgic build, 90s retro nostalgic build I'm doing. Anyway, if you missed that video, I'll link it for you right here. Go back, watch that, and then come catch up on this one because I think a lot of this will make more sense to you. Anyway, one of the neatest parts that I found that came out of that last video I did was I had a lot of people asking me the likes of questions that I hadn't heard in the better part of 20 years. For example, what's the difference between the P's and the GT40 non-P heads? How do they compare to the E7s? What's the good, the bad, and the ugly? What to be aware of? So on and so forth. And as it turns out, there's a lot of people that are interested in doing one of these GT40 nostalgic builds, which I think is fantastic. So the buddy that I got the GT43 bars from he reached out and he says, hey man, I got a set of peas that are laying on the shop floor here. Why don't you come pick them up, do a bit of a comparison. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Okay, folks. So what you're looking at here is the business end of the two GT40 cylinder heads. This here is the GT43 bar cylinder head. This is the GT40 P four bar cylinder head. Okay. First things first, you're going to notice that the spark plug placement in both of these cylinder heads is completely different. So the P head, the spark plug comes into the combustion chamber a heck of a lot further than that of the non P head. It also comes into the combustion chamber at a way different angle. And this is somewhat one of the knocks on the P heads is you can, it, you can get exhaust manifolds and headers on these heads somewhat no problem but what makes it really difficult is on some of the cylinders you need to mess around with like 90 degree spark plug boots and it also makes it so that it's very difficult to service your spark plugs while the exhaust manifold or header is attached to the cylinder head so this is one of the main knocks against the P's whereas the GT43 bar heads, it's a very similar spark plug placement to that of the E7, which I'll show you here in a minute, but identi almost identical spark plug placement, easy to service your spark plugs, you don't have to take your exhaust headers off, so on and so forth. The next main difference is the exhaust valves are actually different sizes. So the exhaust valve on the GT43 bar is a 1.54, the exhaust valve on the GT40P four bar heads is a 1.46. So smaller exhaust valve here on the P's. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, the intake valves are both 1.85. Um, I don't think there's any difference there. Uh, maybe the only other difference you'd see in these in stock format is the ex exhaust valve on the three bar head is domed whereas on the P head, it's flat, okay? The next main difference is the actual combustion chamber of the two cylinder heads is their different sizes. Is if you bolt the P's onto a stock block, you're actually gonna increase your compression ratio ever so slightly by using GT40 P four bar heads, okay? Which if tuned correctly, technically you're going to make more power, but very, it's not even really worth discussing. Just, it's one of the things to note that the P's have a smaller combustion chamber than that of the non P heads. Okay. And just to show you the comparison between the GT 43 bar and the stock E seven head, you can see that the spark plug at least angle is very, very similar. In the GT43 bars, the spark plug does technically come into the combustion chamber a little bit further than that of the E7. You can see it's recessed in here. So 
for what it's worth, I mean, the combustion chamber of these two cylinder heads is very, very similar, but uh, very, very different from that of the P head. Right, so now from this vantage point, what I wanna show you is the way you can tell what type of cylinder head you're dealing with, okay? So this is the E7 head, stock head on a 50HO. You can see right here in this area, all smooth, okay? Versus a GT40P has one, two, three, four bars, okay? These stand off from the actual iron, okay? It's, it's stamped right in there. The GT40 heads, the non-P heads, have one, two, three bars, okay? Dead giveaway. GT40, GT40P, E7, all right? Now there are some other stampings that you can find, like here for example, GT40P. Now, for what it's worth, I, the reason I wanna show you this is if you're out on the hunt for a car and someone's telling you that it's got a set of four bars on it or whatever, this is your easiest way to tell. I will say it's tricky though because typically the accessories are covering a lot of this, but maybe you can get in there with your finger and feel and count the bars, whatever. That's the way you can tell without having to pull a valve cover. I don't think a seller is going to let you pull a valve cover if you're out under the hood looking at a car, but that's what we're referring to when we're talking about the bars, okay, and how to tell what type of heads these are. Again, there's stampings like underneath them on the business end of the head too, but this is the best way that you can tell what you're dealing with. The only way this would be removed is if maybe someone was doing something sneaky, they were trying to get a set of heads into a particular bracket style racing that they wouldn't otherwise be allowed to do. But I think 9.9 .9 times out of 10, you're gonna be able to find the bars. Now, another thing I'll point out while we're in this vantage point is the spark plug angles, okay? So again, E7 and GT43 bar, you can see the plug angle is very, very similar. Okay, comes out on this sort of angle going this way. The P's almost coming straight out. And now, I wish I had an exhaust manifold to show you this, but with a header on, the plugs are very, very close to the exhaust manifold slash header, okay? And again, what you need to do on some of the cylinders to make your spark plug boots work is you need to run a 90 degree spark plug boot. Furthermore, from a serviceability standpoint, some of these spark plugs can be very difficult to access with the exhaust manifold slash header intact bolted on, okay? On the GT43 bar, not so much. On the E7, same thing, right? Very, very serviceable and easy to access. Now, again, from this vantage point, you can see, I did point this out in my last video, but just exhaust port size in stock format, very similar from the three bar to the four bar, but then you get over into the E7, exhaust port's a lot smaller. Similarly on the intake side, okay, here's your stock E7, okay, versus the P, right? Lot bigger. Again, GT40, very similar to the P. I don't, I honestly, I don't think there's any difference in intake and exhaust ports in stock format. So the P's and the non P's very similar size, but just wanted to point out that they are a heck of a lot bigger than that of the stock E7s. Okay, so just in summary, these GT40 bits and pieces hold a very special place in my heart. And I know I'm not alone in saying that. I, I know they hold special places in others' hearts too. The first place that I had ever heard about these GT40 three bar heads was in the 93 Cobra, right? And then later on in the mid 90s, 96, 97, the Explorers got them, Mountaineers, and then into the late 90s, early 2000s, the P's were introduced and they were on the uh, Mountaineers and Explorers. And then even the Ford Lightning, right? The mid 90s Lightning uh, with that super cool tubular upper intake that everybody wants and can't get their hands on. Yeah, that's where those came from. And the story itself is pretty neat. I, I don't know if there's anyone out there that knows the real true blue story, like confirmation from some executive at Ford that says, here's why the Ford Explorer of all vehicles 
got the GT40 treatment. It's uh, a bit of a mystery. The one that seems to make the most sense to me and has the least conspiracy surrounding it is that Ford overproduced parts and they needed to get these things off the shelf and onto something. And the Explorer was a popular little rig. So they went, let's do it to the Explorer. So they got the heads and the upper and lower intakes. Anyway, I guess maybe we'll never know. Or if somebody does know, please, comment below let me know i'm dying to know the the actual story i live for the stories as for other loose ends um me and the infamous project we've been talking a lot about this on our podcast and if you haven't checked that out please head over apple spotify wherever you listen to podcasts you can listen to the two of us do uh beers and garage bs's um it's a lot more uncut uh raw it's uh maybe not for the kids it's true blue two dudes yipping in a garage kind of thing talk about cars we talk about a lot of other stuff too we get into all kinds of life scenarios it's fun um but yeah we've been talking about foxtoberfest and for any of you that are maybe stopping in for the first time haven't seen some of my other videos i'm going to foxtoberfest this year i actually just did a giveaway for a paved parking spot we announced it this morning anyway i'm driving from the west coast of canada all the way down to texas i'm picking chris the infamous project up in seattle and then we're going to Texas, and then from Texas, we're gonna do a quick little turn and burn, almost like a Discovery Channel push for SEMA type deal. Uh, we gotta do a couple things to this 87 Dutch, and then we're driving it to Concord. And he's bringing a couple other Dutch cars. We're gonna have a big spread out there, um, bringing hats, t-shirts, it's gonna be a hoot. And we're doing the full, full meal deal. So we're gonna get there like Tuesday or Wednesday night and be there all week. So there's gonna be all kinds of meet and greets, and I know there's some of you that comment and say, you know, how fun would it be if we could have a beer at some point and a BS? Well, if you're close to North Carolina, even if you're not, I'm driving 3,800 miles. Just come on over. That's where I'm going to be. So really, really looking forward to that. I hope to see a lot of you there. I'd love to meet a lot of you that I chat with on here on a regular basis, face to face. So um, shake hands and I'm a hugger too. So just so you know, anyway, um, really looking forward to this guys. So I think that's all the loose ends I had. Anyway, if you think this video might help somebody, guys, please share it along. That's why I do the videos. I love helping the community and I like having fun chatting with you guys. So share it along to them if they're in the middle of a GT40 build or considering doing one. And uh, I think that's gonna be about it. So thanks for tagging along, guys. I really appreciate it. And I'll catch you on the next one. Take care, bye for now.